Have you ever broken a phone? It's certainly no fun. Today we're going to tear into a repair of a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. All right, welcome to Make Tech Hack Tech. Today is a little bit of an interesting project. Um, I have a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus that has just been beat to heck. This was my son's phone, uh, but he managed to ding this up and bust the screen and busted up the frame pretty good uh, in the process. So in any case, we're finally gonna try and give this a full repair. I think I have all the parts to pull this off. I've never worked on a Samsung phone before. Uh, I have tried some repairs on iPads and similar things like that, never on an iPhone either. So this could go completely sideways. We might just end up with a pile of busted parts. So uh, what I understand we need to do is heat gun this. Um, so we'll give this a shot. Okay. So that released real nicely. This is our new back, this is our old back, this is our camera, and it looks like we have adhesive for the camera to get moved here. So, you know, my son being the <laughs> one who initially busted this up, he's got my iPhone 7 right now. And as soon as he heard I was fixing this, he's already eyeing it again. <laughs> so I don't really know where to go from here. You know what, I bet this is the uh, wireless charging assembly back here, if I had to think about it. Um, it's probably stuck down with tape. So I'm thinking I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of heat and then try and peel it up and see how that does. I can see a few more things here. We have a ribbon cable here that I can, I can pry up. There's a couple ribbons here that we can disassemble. This, of course, is our battery. Okay, that's just a plastic cover. Yep, that's the same plastic cover. Okay, I thought these batteries were held down with adhesive, and it looks like this one used to be. My guess is that with the last repair, they probably reused this same battery and as a result it's not held down as well. These are the type of, of connectors you'd see on a Wi-Fi antenna inside a laptop and they can be fragile. They've got little, um, little metal cleats that fit over a socket and if you pry them up too hard you can bend them and destroy the connectors so we're gonna try and be real careful and delicate. There's two Phillips screws next to the charging interface. What I'm doing is comparing the new frame with the old frame, and that gives me a point of reference for what can be removed versus what stays. This, of course, is all one board coming all the way down here. There's some sort of a, looks like a daughter board here. So this board, this daughter board, and this main board separate from one another with just a slight pry of a spudger. All right, there's our main board disconnected here. Here you can see the underside. So what I'm fighting here is I'm trying to release this ribbon here and there's a bit of adhesive. It's attached to this corner, it's attached to this daughter board here, but right on this side is some sort of a connector, fastener, or something, and it's just hanging up over there. Yeah, there's a bit of adhesive behind it is what I'm fighting. Okay, headphone jack. All right, I did kind of pull away from the bottom side. It was, it was held in, sort of slid in there, really. Now, there will be a question of, will we be able to get all this to go back together? But first, let's compare and see if there's any other parts we need to pull out. There's two things here that I'm fighting. One is this, this circular disc labeled D40. The other is this ribbon cable and whatever this module is here. Okay, flash module maybe. There was a foil strip that kind of crossed between here and here. Uh, I had to break that to get that out. I don't know if that'll matter for us or not. 
guess I don't really need to be worried about breaking the plastic tabs on the old one, do I? <laughs> wow, that is in there something good. Hit it with a little more heat. Cool, I think we're in business to start transferring things back. That flash module head adhesive, I believe. Yeah, that's stuck in there real nicely. So I think that took care of that item for us. So really we need to deal with D40. I think we'll put small dab. Hold that for just a minute. Now, uh, what was our order of removal here? Um, this daughter board would go on next. What I'm doing here, as this seats in, there's a couple places these need to kind of go underneath the edges. Uh, over on this side in particular, that ribbon cable I mentioned earlier with adhesive, there's a small notch that it's fitting in underneath. And so I'm sort of trying to maneuver these into place before I fasten them down with screws. That last little bit here, this little module right here, uh, which is next to the charging port area, sat in there a little too cleanly. <laughs> it makes me nervous that it did the right thing. So I'd just like to pop it back out. Some kind of sensor. So it just it just sits right down in there and almost feels as though it's snapping in, but it's not. Our headphone jack needs to fit down in there. There's a small brass metal piece sticking out there. And I don't know whether that's, if something busted, does that fit down in as a sensor? What is the deal with that? I'm gonna assume it's meant to be that way because I'm not aware of this being broken. I have all sorts of these little grabby tools, right? This is from an iFixit kit. Um, these are micro pliers, um, but I also use quite often these, I think they're, I think they're forceps, I think, but these sort of angled plier things. I think I got these from my grandfather-in-law who was actually in a medical profession. He had this toolkit that my wife inherited and in it were a couple screwdrivers and just a pile of these things and they are the handiest things when it comes to fitting stuff in strange places. Which I assume is why they're handy in the medical profession. That didn't seem to go in right. I'm going to back that out. Maybe we'll do the other side first. That seemed, um, that last one just seemed to go in a, a little wonky. There, that fit down square that time. See, here's an example of where the picture comes in handy because I don't recall where this black screw goes. I have a screw opening here and I have a screw opening here. So let's take a look back at the picture and see what we've got right there. So it goes in this space there. Now, we've got a couple things to fasten back down here. We've got these two antenna style cables. I wish I knew what that connector was. And we have this ribbon cable for the headphone jack. Sometimes these pressed down kind of surface ribbon cables can be easily just pressed into place, but they've got to line up perfectly. And if they're lined up perfectly, they work great in that fashion, but it's a matter of lining them up that's the tricky part. There we go. You can't feel much when that happens. Um, it, uh, it's just a very slight snap when that occurs. These small, let's see if I can get you a good view. These small connectors here, these two wireless connectors, need to go back on pretty square also. They can get damaged pretty easily if you put too much pressure on them. Same as taking them off. So just try and get a nice square lineup with the socket underneath. And then I find that pressing down with my thumb, not too hard, but it, but slightly firmly, and you'll feel it snap into place. Does that one have an issue? Or maybe it got broken. Maybe I broke it. Maybe the last repair people broke it. I wonder which. Well, that would put a stop to this project pretty quickly, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, the, you know, if that is busted, it's a single cable. So chances are I can order one, but it's probably two weeks away. 
But let's keep working on this for a minute. It doesn't look at all broken though. Usually you can visibly see when the when the bits of that are snapped. And I don't see any damage down on the actual port itself. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna swap ends. Well, that felt better. Was I just not giving it enough pressure maybe? Let's keep going, I guess, and we'll see what we run into. Okay, I'm feeling better about that. That uh, sat down a little funny, but oh well. Okay, so we're on to the main board now. Now, if you recall that that daughter board fastens to the bottom of the main board underneath here, so there, that snapped together nicely. So let's see if we can hold it together while we miss these. Cameras are what we are on to next. I am feeling pretty good about all those. Let's, uh, I don't know what the deal is with all the tape all over this thing. Seems like, almost like packaging tape. I can't tell whether it came with, oh yeah, there's a bit of adhesive on it. Okay, batteries in, looking good there. Let's see about these plastic covers. I remember reading or seeing in a video that there's a point at which we can test the digitizer in the screen. We're getting pretty close to that. But that there was something about needing the back cover on or something like that, or we'd get some kind of an error. And I don't remember what it was. So I'm trying to fit this, uh, this wireless pad back on. And there's like just these little notches that it wants to fit into. There, I think we got it. Just took a little bit of pressure. Well, bonus, we uh, don't look like we're going to have any extra screws, which is always a plus. Used to be when I was young. You know, of course, when I was really young, I just took things apart. Um, you know, I remember I must have been eight, seven, something like that. And I had a bright red cassette player. And I loved that thing, but I decided I wanted to know how it worked, so I took it apart. And then I thought, well, I can put it back together, but I couldn't. So I used whatever tools I was using and gutted it out and turned it into a piggy bank. <laughs> and that was my, you know, making it making it good. And then as I got better with things, I'd start to be able to fix stuff, but you'd run into things like you repair a laptop and you put the wrong screw in the wrong place and you dimple the top of the plastic or you end up with three extra screws but it feels solid so you just kind of leave it how it is and of course as i got better you, you you know if you end up with an extra screw now you backtrack and you figure out what went wrong but it's a pretty rare thing and that just takes practice and learning learning lessons on how to repair things and it's not to say you don't still make mistakes this very well could still go sideways on us who knows if all our parts are good and whatnot so I think we'll take, oh, we have to move our camera. I think a little bit of heat will be good here. Oh, we lost one of our video connections. Let's, uh, let's just get that out of our way. That does not want to come up. Maybe I need to use a little more heat. Oh, there we go. But I think for now, we'll just plug that in so that it doesn't have a heart attack about not having a camera. Feels right. Set that in place. Where's our power button? Here. Maybe something is up with our power button. I think maybe we need to backtrack just a touch. I think we're going to pull off this plastic bit, this cover along the left here also, since that's next to where our power button is. See if there's anything wonky underneath that. Ha! 
Okay, so I'm not sure what's changed there other than I swapped the battery, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we'll table that other one. Uh, so I guess as soon as this comes up, we'll just verify that the screen looks okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've got the plastic cover on it, but that seems to be working just fine. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and power it off. Oh, so there's our issue right there. So you see I'm trying to power it off and it's not doing anything. Let's see if we can pin that down. Yep, so now that I'm pressing down here, I'm getting the, uh, the proper power off. So my guess is that whatever I had installed, however I had this set up, there wasn't enough pressure occurring right here. And as a result, that power button wasn't making contact because there's a small metal connection that occurs right in here of some sort. I'd like to see the charging light up. There we go. Uh, we know our charging port's working. I expect the headphone port will work. We'll test that when we get a little further together. Power button's working, we got a full screen. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's go ahead and get our camera module installed back here. Okay, let's get into the camera. <laughs> that wallpaper that my son and his buddies set. Okay, so this is, this is the back camera working. Can we switch to the front camera? Front camera working. Okay, we're getting a USB connection for the, for the computer, so we're in good shape there. Uh, this is my Omni Charge, uh, which is my portable battery pack. It happens to have uh, Qi charging. Ah, we are charging. Okay, that's what I was looking for, making sure a wireless charging is working, and it is. <laughs> yeah, my son definitely took over this phone because he changed the music. Definitely get music and music out of both channels, so that's a plus. Do we get it out of the speaker? All right, and we got, we got sound. Let's go ahead and power it off. And we have to get the adhesive on the back done. Okay, I think we're gonna do that. I think I got it. Oh, I forgot to test the fingerprint reader a little bit late now if it wasn't working. But in any case, uh, I think we've been successful. I'm super happy with how this turned out. It looks completely factory new. That was certainly a new project for us, digging to a phone to that level, uh, but it went really well considering, and it only took about two hours. This is Jeremy with Make Tech Hack Tech. We make, break, learn, and explore new technology projects. While you're here, hit that subscribe button and stick around to see what we have coming up next.